Welcome to the video lecture series on Six Sigma and Lean Six Sigma. In this video, we will look through some practical simulated case studies and questions and answers and Six Sigma and Lean Six Sigma define phase. I also request you to watch my videos on Six Sigma define phase. Without much delay, let's start this journey. As always, I am your instructor Gunjan Subedi and this is my Lean University. Your freedom to professional learning. Before starting the topic, let me remind you that you can access the full course on Six Sigma through the link in the description. Please stay with me till the end of this video for solving the Six Sigma Define Phase Questions and link of some free resources. In this section, we will try to go through simulated quizzes, interviews and practice questions that will help you to learn the practical aspects of using Lean and Six Sigma and also helps you to excel in the competitive exams related to Lean and Six Sigma. Without much delay, let's run the quiz. Scenario 1 is related to setting SMART goals. Let's see the scenario. The scenario is an industry related to the production of hard leather for sports shoes is keen on implementing the Six Sigma DMAIC improvement project. The project charter included the goal statement. As you have studied about the SMART goal statement, can you identify any flaw with this goal statement? The goal statement given is, the goal of our Six Sigma improvement project is to find out the causes of defects occurring at our leather assembling factory and decrease the defects by the end of the project life of four months. We are given here that the goal is both realistic and attainable. We have to find out if the goal isn't specific or measurable or timely. I will give you some time to think for its answer. You can pause the video now. This is quite an interesting question to follow. You might have noticed that this statement uses some form of the use of SMART goals that we had studied in the lecture of formation of the SMART goal statement. By SMART goal, we mean making a goal that is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, tangible or timely. We are given that the goal is both realistic and attainable according to the capacity of the organization. But is it specific? Yes. It talks about finding out the causes of the defect at the leather assembling factory. Again, where? Leather assembling factory. So, it is specific here and it also wants to decrease the defect. But decreasing the defect by how much? No, it's not measurable. There lies the problem. If you could form a goal statement which said something like decreasing the defect by 50%, we could say that it's measurable. Okay, let's see if it's timely enough. Yes, we are bounded to make improvements by certain time, that is, by the end of the project life of four months. We have four months duration to make improvements, so it's timely. As no way in this statement there is any information of decreasing the defect by certain units, the goal is not measurable. So, this is the flaw with this goal statement. Let us see the next scenario. The second scenario talks about allocating the team members. You must have learned allocating the team members in the lecture of RACI matrix. The scenario here is identify the flaw with the allocation of the team members in the following list. So, here different people are allocated to different roles. For example, John and Mark are responsible for the completion of the project or doing the task of the project. 
Mira, Kiran, and Ahmad are accountable. Barbara and Anita are consulted. And Margaret and Thomas are to be informed. So, your job is to identify the flaw with allocation of the team members. Is the flaw related to too many responsible people allocated? Is the flaw related to too many accountable? Or is the flaw related to too many people consulted or too many people informed? I'll give you some time to think for the answer. You can pause the video now. Okay, let me read the answer for you. The correct answer to this question is there are too many accountable because only one person should be held accountable for any task assigned. If you could not identify the correct answer to this question, we can revise the terms again. Responsible are people who actually do or complete the task and at least one member should be assigned to the responsible role to complete the task or project. Accountable is a person who is answerable for completion of task. This person is also the one who delegates the work to those responsible. Also, there must be only one accountable specified for each task. When two or more people are accountable, if there is any flaw or any mistake in the process, there might be a confusion of whom to send the complaint or whom to discuss. So, as far as possible, only one person should be accountable for each action. Now, consulted are those subject matter experts with whom there is a two-way communication. There can be multiple consultants in a single project. Informed are those people who are kept up to date on progress and with whom there is just one-way communication. So, there can be also many people who can be assigned the job as informed, just to let them know the progress of the project. Let us see the next scenario. The scenario third says, can you sort out what is wrong with the following RSCI matrix? You are given the RSCI matrix here. The options here are the project manager is consulting the project members to allocate resources, which is not necessary. In allocating resources and making plan phase, two people are consulted, no one is accountable. In carrying out the task A, two people are responsible. In carrying out the task B, nobody is accountable. So, can you identify what is wrong with the RCI? I'll give you some time to think for the answer. You can pause the video now. Okay, the correct answer to this question is option 2 and option 4. We can see here that in the plan phase, no one is held accountable. So, at least one person should be made accountable. Also, in carrying out the task B, here too, no one is accountable for the task. In the earlier scenario, we saw that too many people were accountable, which was a mistake. And in this case, no one is held accountable and that's also a common mistake that people often make while forming the RSCI matrix. Let us see another scenario which is related to the stakeholder analysis. The scenario is, suppose you own a small company but haven't been able to promote a new product line in the market effectively. Upon investigation, you found that Mrs. Anita, who is the marketing manager, was found to be slightly uninterested in the projects. She was uninterested in doing the promotional works for the new product line, which suppose was very important for your company. More about Anita here. She has 20 years of experience in the marketing field and a few years back, she also got the Employee of the Year Award. Which of the following activities would you perform looking at the following stakeholder analysis matrix? The options are Fire Mrs. Anita. There is no point in keeping a stakeholder who was once proficient in the same task as it is given that she also got the employee of the year some years back. But now she is not showing interest in your company activities. She is not performing her duties well. So the first option says Fire Mrs. Anita. It seems that Mrs. Anita is unsatisfied with something. 
ask her the reason and try to keep her satisfied. Or the last option is ask her if she is trying to jump to other company. Which of the following activity would you perform? I'll give you some time to think so you can pause the video now. Okay, let us uh, reveal the answer. The correct answer to this question is the second one. It seems that Mrs. Anita is unsatisfied with something. Ask her the reasons and try to keep her satisfied. We know that the activity of Mrs. Anita is low, but her role is high because she is a marketing manager and she was doing her job well. So we should try to keep such kind of people satisfied. The first option, fire Mrs. Anita. There is no point in keeping a stakeholder who was once proficient in the same task showing interest in your company activities is not correct. The second option is correct as we can see from the stakeholder activity influence matrix also. Mrs. Anita has a good experience in the field and also she was very active in the past. Her knowledge and marketing the company products could be a valuable asset because it is given that she has 20 years of experience. You should take a chance to keep her satisfied and keep her closely in the team. You can ask her the reason for the low interest and you should try to solve issues if any. Last option is a big no. This is her work and she should do it. It is not always possible that uh, she is trying to jump to another company if she is not performing her duty well. And that's not a good way with dealing with the things. So there's no point asking her if she is trying to jump to the other company. Let us see another scenario. Scenario 5 is related to defining customers and their expectations. Basically, we use the Khan model for defining customers and their expectations. Suppose your role is a product designer and if you are product designer for a new type of refrigerator, which of the following qualities would be the performance qualities? The options are, I would add the option of adding a digital thermometer on the wall of the refrigerator so that my customers can know without opening the door itself that the refrigerator is cool. I would add a cooling feature on the product. Next option is, I would add feature that would fast cool the product and would continuously improve. Which of the following qualities could be the performance qualities? For more lessons on Six Sigma, Case studies and fun quizzes, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. And also, please go through other related videos on Six Sigma. Also, please do not forget to go through the Six Sigma resources on the description. Thank you so much. Meet you in the next video.